All right, Sisters fans, hope everybody's doing well. I um, had fun last night, mainly because internet was working, the cable live stream was working very well, so unlike last week when they were showing white chicks when they should have been showing sisters, um, training day was in its final minutes, and then I rolled right into the episode. Now, I will say, uh, this episode, a lot, of, a, a good number of people were saying that it was kind of average, middle of the road. Some people just straight up saying boring, but I'll, I'll say this much. If last night's episode was the worst season four could get, I would still say that we will be in for one heck of a season. Because truly, you know, there were moments where I'm kind of like, okay, was I mean, there were moments where I looked at the clock and I'm like, wow, okay, time's moving slow. But then next thing you know, it's like, damn, time's moving fast. But let's be honest here, that's mainly due to the Zatima scene towards the end of the episode. This episode, yet again, this is like the second week in a row where you could just tell the quality grade A material went to Zack and Fatima, whereas everything else, you know, in terms of everybody else kind of got table scraps, but... I didn't mind Sabrina's scene. I didn't. Uh, Calvin just could peace out for all I care, but he's going to be back next week. Um, Danny and Karen are just ridiculous, and I enjoyed the basketball scene. And truth be told, I actually think Gary will help Zach and not be shady about it. And I'll get into why in this video and even more in a separate video. But I'm pretty content with giving the episode a 7 out of 10. I thought it was a okay episode. You know, kind of average, but a little bit above due to the Zatima scene in a way, but overall I did enjoy it. Some parts more than others, but I wouldn't say it was flat out boring, dull, or characters regressing, that kind of nonsense. But I uh, had a, a awesome time live tweeting as well as doing the live stream last night. And thankfully on the live stream, we had a lot more to talk about than Sisters. You know, like the Medea trailer, the Oval, um, a little taste of House of Pain, you know, in regards to that finale. Because if we were just talking about Sisters last night, the episode would not have been... I mean, the live stream would not have lasted more than 20 minutes. Heck, even the cliffhanger ending was a surprise. I didn't suspect Logan to show up. Now, let's jump into the review. Again, Sisters Season 4, Episode 4, entitled The Night Game. So... Uh, Bio's friend Johnny jumps in, so we really don't see who would have won the fight. I mean, Calvin and Bio got into it, but Johnny just quickly jumped in between the two and broke it up, and he and Bio, you know, bounced. So after that, Calvin just causes, well, I mean, he had already caused a scene at that point, but he just makes a damn fool out of himself at this point. You know, he's in his feelings. He thinks Sabrina arrange this he was literally giving straight up gary vibes here just accusing um sabrina of orchestrating this entire scenario in order to see how he would handle it like yeah you wanted to see if i would be a man about it. you know after the whole jacoby thing uh see if i was tough see if i would fight and he's blaming sabrina for this saying that you're the one who didn't do anything with disrespecting me calvin first of all you are the man in the situation number two as a woman i think sabrina held herself pretty well on her own i mean bio came up spoke to her um you and then when he tried to put his number in her phone she quickly stopped that but then he just kept on going like so when can i uh meet up with you so we can get to know each other again i mean and she even pointed over to you calvin like you know hey uh look i'm sorry but i'm actually in the middle of something right now and then, yeah, Calvin was the one to speak up. And, yeah, again, I could agree with him being in his feelings because Bio literally, oh, we thought, thought what? Basically, you know, assuming he was gay based off his attire, which, I mean, in 2022, hey. But, um, yeah, it's like you just literally, no. After that situation, I don't know why Tyler is writing Calvin in the show anymore. Like, this, there was no reason for uh, Calvin to blow up the way he did and cause a scene, embarrass Sabrina, and, you know, she's, you know, I'm just going to get a ride chair, I ain't, no, I'm not going anywhere with you, so, Calvin bounces, Sabrina sits there embarrassed, and I'm just sitting there like, damn, Calvin, 
You just left a good plate of food laying there on the table. I would have ate that or got a to-go plate. But uh, we go over to Andy and Karen. They just got back to the parking garage. And, um, you know, Andy's having a tough time. Pull Look, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I hate driving. I've only driven two vehicles in my life outside of my parents' cars a couple of times. But I'm the kind of person where if I'm not used to a new ride, it takes me a little bit of time to get used to it. So for a Rolls Royce, like I don't like trucks, big vehicles. Give me like a small, manageable car. I drive a 2005 Honda Accord. And since I've moved home, it's almost been like, what, almost eight months. I've only driven like less than 10 times, mainly due to the fact that there really isn't anywhere to go around here, which I'm content with, um, you know, town and civilization, so to speak, is like 20, 30 minutes away from here, not counting like a general store or something like that in the vicinity, but you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, a big car like that, it would take some a uh, while to get used to. She even said, you know, I might get valet or somebody to park the car correctly for me um, before I go out tomorrow. And they get out the car. And a lot of the scenes I'm about to cover, like this scene with Karen and um, Andy, then Karen and Aaron, then El Fuego and Danny, and then uh, Bio and Sabrina. These are pretty straightforward scenes. I didn't. Even, I think I took like one bullet point in notes because it's pretty much the same old, same old. You know, they get out the car, Andy's looking happy, and Karen, not to burst her bubble, but just say, look, ever since those fake cops pulled us over, you were pretty quiet in the car. Don't do it. Don't do what? Don't, 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 don't call Gary Andy. I'm not. And then you could just tell Andy, she, anytime, you know how, uh, uh, Zach called out for Tima last week about the a whole anytime you get scared or nervous, you can't look me in the eye. The same thing happens to Andy whenever somebody is calling her out on her bull crap. Basically, when somebody can see the bullshit that's right in front of them, Andy will look away and then do that whole, I'm not going to do it. And Karen is right. This is one of the few scenes. This is like the first Karen scene of the season. I'm like, she's actually being a friend, not trying to cause a mess, but it's like she said, look, Andy, I know you don't do it. I know you are, but don't do it. I'm not. Okay. And then um, th it was a nice scene where it was like, Andy's like, hey, let me walk you to your car. I'll be fine because once you walk me to your my car, who's going to walk you back to your apartment? So that, that was a good scene. They had each other's back. And I feel like Andy knows better than to have, you know, parking garage solo trips given everything that's been going on from jasmine and then hayden i know there are two different parking garages the one she lives in versus the one that uh at the law firm but i think i think it was a good scene because it is late at night but in any case andy goes back to her room and you know i'll talk about that scene first so andy is on her bed you know just thinking about whether or not to call gary to thank him for the rolls royce and whatnot she even has a lot of the bags from the car with the jewelry and bags and all this i mean you know like the purses basically the name brand stuff that <laughs> name brand the name brand stuff he bought for her. and while she's contemplating whether or not to call him a phone call comes through and it's robin and i was right because i did a video about why is she smiling so much i'm like it's either robin that's calling or it's gary but yeah it's robin he's on a flight uh some people are saying like you know that scene reminded them of uh temptation from uh the what was it? Temptation? Something of a marriage counselor? It was like the movie version of the marriage counselor play. But in any case, uh, he's on the flight just wishing he she was there with him. And, you know, they might, they started having, I don't know the correct terminology, but basically they're describing what they would do to each other if they were there with each other. That's the best way to put it. I mean, what did he say? It's me on my private jet, the pilot, and the flight attendant. Trust and believe I could talk how I want to on this thing. And uh, in the middle of Andy kind of half-assing it, <laughs> so to speak, a beat comes through on her phone, and she's like, oops. And then the conversation kind of continues about, oh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's late. I got to go to bed. Oh, yeah, so you can call him? What? I heard the other beep on the phone, Andy. Look, I know you're not mine, so you're not, I, don't, I don't own you or anything, so... It is what it is. And I'm glad he called her out for it because I remember seeing a post on social media a few days ago about, you know, something something to the same effect of what happened with, uh, um, uh, wow, sorry, brain fart, Andy and Robin just now. 
Um, it said, when those texts start getting shorter with you, they're getting longer with someone else. So basically, it's like, you know, Andy pulled the whoop de doo Like, you know, uh, oh, Robin, I'm going to go to sleep. And then she hops on the phone with uh, Gary. Nah, I mean, when they eventually get off the phone with each other, wow. Um, she decided not to call Gary. So I'm like, oh, okay, dang, um, props to you. So... Going back to the parking garage, Karen gets on the phone with Aaron, and well, before she leaves Andy, she drops her name uh, of the mom, like, hey, I'm Lisa's daughter, right? Don't worry, I can take care of myself. Yeah, where's Lisa? When she's coming back, I mean, Miss Lisa will probably set Karen straight, for real, but no, she's probably not coming back, but um, Karen calls Aaron so they can talk. And, I mean, Aaron acts surprised. I mean, I don't know what was more surprising. The fact that fans were shocked that Aaron was back after an absence or Zach being shocked that Karen... W I mean, Aaron being shocked that Karen would even call him. Not to mention the fact that, well, I'm, I'm surprised he went that long without talking to her. Usually, he's the one to initiate all contact. But, essentially, um, he's on the basketball court. And, yeah, we actually see Zach and Gary in the background. And... She's like, hey, where, uh, oh, yeah, don't worry. I don't want to bother you then if you're busy. Oh, no, I'm not busy. And I'm thinking, oh, God, dude, just just play the game with the guys and you can talk to her tomorrow or something. But, no, um, she's like, where are you? So he gives the address like, wait, Gary's here, though. Oh, and when he says this, if you look closely, Zach is literally right behind um, Aaron when he tells her that. So I was a bit shocked. So. We can actually skip ahead here. Um, so Karen comes to the basketball court. And Aaron comes over to talk because he sees her at the fence. And before they could really get into a conversation, Gary just, you know, strolls on over. Hey, Karen, you're looking good. Gary. Oh, you want me to go? Okay. So Gary just backs off. So in the midst of the conversation, um, it's just one of those things where... Oh, so what do you want to talk about? Well, yeah, I don't want to tell you here in front of everybody. Okay, so uh, why didn't you just tell me to come to your house? Well, you know, whenever you do that, then stuff gets complicated. And Well, I'll follow your lead. Fine, we can leave. I, I mean, I'm not busy. Uh, I just, you know, checked out. I'm, I'm done for the night. So it's just the guys show up as late at night. Because it's the only time we can all get away. Some of these guys are out here till like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning playing. But it's a good exercise. And I'll come over to your place now. So before they can really get ready to leave, the ball um, flies over to the fence. Zach goes to get it. And Zach? Karen? Wait, you two uh, play the ball together? No, we don't play ball together. We're on opposing sides. And Aaron acts shocked that Zach is there. Oh, I didn't know he was going to be here. If y'all were playing on opposing sides, and it seems like you had been playing a good bit of time when Karen called you on the phone, I'm pretty sure Zach and Aaron would have like, or Aaron would have noticed Zach on the court. Like, you just don't do that. It's, I mean, I know it's dark, but it ain't that dark, you know? <laughs> so it seemed a bit weird how that worked out. I mean, because like I said, Zach was playing on the court when Karen called. So, you know, when you're playing basketball, all I could think about is like PE or even in college, when, uh, you know, go to the gym, play basketball for fun with some of the guys from the dorm and whatnot, and meet up, and heck, sometimes you might get like, hey, a random team on the court that wants to play. Look at it this way. You have to know who's on whose team so you know you're guarding the right person. So Aaron would have known that Zach was there. It just seemed weird that he acted like, uh, oh, uh, Zach, yeah, we, we good. I'm out of here. But from there, uh, Karen's like, you know, speechless. Those two looked at each other like, you know, that meme, that quote you always see, like when you see someone from high school and Walmart and you try to avoid them, that kind of thing. It's like you run into somebody, you don't want to talk to them, and then you just keep moving in the other direction. That's kind of what happened there. But in any case, um, Aaron and Karen get ready to go. And then we go over to Gary and Zach, and, you know, they're kind of winding down the game. And uh, Gary's like, you know, I got to bounce. But they just kind of take a moment to say, hey, what do you do? 
hedge fund manager. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm starting in stocks. I'm doing all right in stocks. And uh, Gary's like, yeah, let me go to my ride. I get you my card and we'll talk from there. And, you know, they look over at each other's vehicles and it kind of shows that Gary. Well, yeah, we know Gary is richer than Zach due to the fact that, well, he was an athlete, now head fund manager and uh, hedge fund manager. And he's making bank. I don't know who's richer, Robin or Gary. I really don't. So I couldn't really specify who's like the wealthier one. But regardless, both of them got money. Let's just put it that way. And, you know, it's an interesting conversation with uh, Zach saying, you know, hey, man, it's good to see another brother in this line of work. Because, you know, when you talk to these white people, they they, they explaining it, but I, I, they're just confusing the brother, you know. So it's really cool to see these two link up. Now, truth be told, I don't think that Gary is going to play Zach. Like I said, I'll do a full video on that. But the next morning, and I'm, I mean, this episode was kind of messed. So I feel like it's okay to kind of jump from scene to scene. Uh, we actually see Zach over at his new place. And he calls Gary, who's at work. And it's like, holy crap, we see him at work. Um, and he's in the office with uh, one of his associates named Jake. And, you know, Zach talks about the situation. Um, Bellinista was the name of the stock. And thankfully, he doesn't tell Gary how he got the information. He just simply says, hey, it's my first time, I guess, uh, $19,000. And now it's over, you know, 1.5 or 1.2. And, you know, I was just wondering, what's your opinion on the stock? Do you think it still has some fire left in it? Because it's a situation where he it's like deal or no deal. You could take the deal. You could take the $1.5 million you have now. Or you could say no deal. Try to hold out longer to see if the stock's going to go up. Is your call. But Zach, um, excuse me, uh, Gary just tells Zach, I still think the stock has legs. Uh, you could sell if you want to, but I think it has some money left in it. Uh, let me pass you over to one of my associates, Jake. Don't worry. Uh, he's one of the best guys in the uh, company. He can help you out great. So basically, you know, from one brother to the next. So it's good that they had each other's back because Gary didn't leave Zach high and dry. He gave him some good information, but he's like, hey, in order to take this further, you know, to go into more, even more detail, let me give you my boy Jake to help you out. So he's like, hey, text your intel over. We'll look over it and Jake will give you a call back. So I just love the fact that Gary was doing his thing to help Zach. And look, again, I just feel like this is a brothers kind of thing i don't think it's a shady kind of thing based off of everything that went i know it seems naive to think that given everything gary has done in the past but i do feel like this is one of those situations where hayden is a black guy who's been trying to screw over zach ever since they encountered each other and in order to kind of redeem gary somewhat I feel like Tyler wouldn't do it where every black person Zach meets is going to screw him over. So I think Gary's the one who's actually going to help him out. Sure, he doesn't have the best dynamic with fans or the cast. or excuse me, the characters when it comes to Andy. But I do feel like uh, he's going to do good with his job. Because remember, Jake was like, hey, man, thanks for looking out for a brother. He's like, don't worry, man, I got you. So basically, you know, Jake being happy that Zach is being referred to him which I feel like with Zach having as much money as he does, that's going to be a good reflection on Jake's, you know, report and performance. So I feel like they take care of their consumers. That's what I'm thinking. Now, uh, trying to get this episode review back on track. Uh, we go over to El Fuego coming over to Danny's place and, you know, Danny's ready and raring to go. I mean, the lights are dim. She's like, take off your clothes. She opens her robes. I mean, he's like, wait, what's going on here? And then before he can even get fully undressed, she just changes her mind. And I'm just thinking to myself, I tweeted this out as a joke, but I'm like, I guess this episode is quote unquote, allegedly supposed to take place in 2021. And I'm thinking, uh, excuse me. And I'm thinking Danny with as high as gas is right now. Why are you playing this man? You're going to have him drive all the way over to your place. I don't know the distance between these places, by the way. And then tell him you change your mind. It's like, you know, this dude likes you, likes you, but you just want to play him. So they just have an exchange like, oh, is this about the white boy? And she's like, you know, I don't think I can do this. Not tonight. Basically, you could see the conflict in Danny in regards to, you know what? Yeah, I don't think I can be for the streets, at least not right now. And I feel like I'm only using El Fuego to get back at Preston because I'm jealous and whatnot. And El Fuego really does like me, so I shouldn't do this. But then she decides to do it anyway because he gets dressed for like the second time. And she gets in the bed 
and then says, come on. And so he just jumps in. And then before you know it, we hear that like music. We hear just, this episode had a lot of great background music. I will say that. So um, from there, we go back to the restaurant. Sabrina's, you know, face palming out of her embarrassment. And Bio actually comes back. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. Hey, hey, don't worry. I didn't come back for you. Uh, I, I lost my watch. And it turned out Sabrina had it, so I guess she was kind of looking forward to seeing him again, or may have given the watch over to somebody in management, I don't know. But in any case, he reveals that he owns the restaurant, well, not just this one, but this entire restaurant franchise. Oh, well, congratulations on your success. And I mentioned this in the live stream, and not to sound petty, but it's kind of funny because about two or three days ago, when I posted about the channel... Uh, in the month of January, just this month alone, and the month isn't even over yet, uh, this month, uh, I had the report from YouTube Studio Analytics that the channel itself, I think this is around 20, day 23 of the month, your channel has gotten 109% more views than normal. And I was like, yo, I got to share this. Like, It wasn't the money or anything, but just the views, subscriber count, you know, watch time. And I posted like on, you know, LinkedIn because duh, why not? LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, the Facebook groups just to kind of like celebrate with everybody because I wouldn't be able to do this without you all. And a girl who friend zoned me several times, actually, uh, she, dang, well, I don't even remember the last time I saw her, probably like 2015 or something. She messaged me on LinkedIn because she liked the post. And then a few hours later, hey, how are you? Hey, what's up? Just congratulations on all your success. <laughs> oh, again, I don't mean to sound petty, but I mean this. I just chuckled when I heard that line of the episode, and I'm like, yeah, this, this, this happened too. Yeah. So in any case, uh, it's funny because Bio just starts, you know, to flirt with her some more. It's like, hey, I didn't come over here to start any trouble the first time. I really didn't know. And wait, you're he left you here? Wow. Well, hey, if you ever need me to, I can kick his ass again. That's not funny. So it's kind of funny how Sabrina is trying to act pouty. I mean, obviously she's still embarrassed about what happened, but uh, it's just one of those situations where she didn't want to engage in flirting, but it's like she really didn't want to leave, so to speak. I mean, she eventually says, hey, I'll get a ride share. Uh, oh, no, I can take you home. No, no, that's too much. But she does agree to take his phone number. So then from there, uh, she leaves. And remember, I feel like we still don't know Bio's full thing, which is him being a prince. Da, 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 da. All right. So let me see here. Wow, I actually went over my entire first page of notes. So on to page two, because trust and believe, uh, there's only like two or three more scenes to really talk about here. All right. So uh, the next day, Zach actually watches Fatima as she sleeps and she wakes up. And it's kind of funny because of the fact that they have a little brief conversation in regards about trust in regards like, hey, I'll tr I'm trusting you until you prove me wrong. So then Zach decides to play around and just say, you know, yeah, um, after the game last night, I had to stop off and pick up something from some chick. And then Fatima just starts, you know, glaring at him and then out of nowhere catches an attitude. It, then this is the line where she's like, Zach, if you F in my heart, you're going to lose. So then she gets out of bed and then Zach's just sitting there like three, two, one. <gasps> and he goes in the bathroom and she's stunned that the bathroom mirror is just full of pictures of her sleeping. And he reveals like, yeah, I had to stop off at a chick's house because I got a friend who does photography. I learned how to use the camera. I took those photos. I gave it back to her so she could develop the photos. And that's how I got everything. And then it's kind of funny because earlier in the episode when... Karen was telling a Andy about not calling Zach, I mean, excuse me, Gary, because of how creepy it was to have them followed and everything. Well, creepy, but it was kind of a sweet surprise and it was romantic. And then you have Fatima saying that it's kind of creepy, but it's romantic. So it's like Andy and Fatima kind of have the same love languages in a sense, not completely the same, but I thought it was just a fun nod to both of them recognizing something as slightly creepy, but also kind of romantic at the same time. But at least what Zach did, I guess, wasn't illegal, like what Gary did, which was hire people to impersonate cops. Meh. But yeah, I mean, I will admit, though, I'm thinking, like, 
okay, is this considered sweet? But what Justin did in the haves and the have nots was definitely creepy when he had that entire collage of photos of Jeffrey in his apartment. Or should I say him in Jeffrey's apartment? Eh, kind of weird. But, I mean, Fatima looks so damn good. But then again, I'm like, okay, who actually looks that good when they're sleeping? Hmm. But from there, you know, they just have a talk about, hey, I'm not going to F you over. I'm not, you're not going to F me over. And before she can, like, get ready for work, they just go to bed and go at it. And I'm thinking, first of all, again, this is the magic of television. I know my damn self. I don't look good when I sleep. Hell, I barely look good when I'm awake. Secondly, I don't even talk. I don't open my mouth in the morning until I brush my teeth. And y'all were standing in that bathroom a good two minutes and ain't nobody brushed their teeth. And then you're just going to go straight into having sex. But I guess maybe, well, no, no. If Zach was out playing basketball late at night, I'm pretty sure he would go shower and brush his teeth and whatnot before getting in bed with Fatima. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Plus, he was probably, you know, only asleep for a few hours before he woke up and then Fatima did so uh, he could watch her sleep. And not to mention, you know, the time it took to stop by to get the camera, put the photos up. We don't know what time he got in. Let's remember, uh, he doesn't work anymore. He can make his own hours. I can relate to that. But yeah, again, this is just another one of those scenes building the foundation of what's to come in Zatima. I just feel at this point we're really seeing Zack and Fatima becoming more comfortable with one another. Because think about it, if you really subtract the sex scenes and um words of affirmation and whatnot we really don't see that much development with their relationship outside of that i know uh some people online were saying hey you know it's great what they're doing for each other but zach take fatima out on a date or something maybe fix her dinner just do something a little differently and i'm pretty sure we're going to get that in due time now when we go back to uh Karen's place we see Aaron and Karen in bed and apparently they didn't even have sex they just apparently laid in bed together that night and I see a lot of people saying the same thing great to see Aaron again but at this point bro you're literally too nice you're Karen's doormat I and the thing that got me about Karen and it's my number one tweet of the night is Funny how Karen didn't waste a moment to tell Zach that she's pregnant because she assumed he's the daddy, but needs to process things and can't seem to find the words with Aaron. So, Karen calls Aaron last night so they can talk. Goes all the way to the basketball court. Says, oh, I can't tell you here. They go all the way back to her house. And then apparently they don't even talk. They just go to sleep and he just lays beside her. And then it's the next morning, and yeah, wasn't there something you were supposed to tell me? Um, I, I, I'm not ready yet. Bullshit. So, he just says, I love you, and it's so, it's not fair for you to do that. Here's what I think. Her pregnancy is up in the air until she goes to the freaking doctor. I don't think she's really pregnant. I won't believe it until she goes. I still say the pregnancy bullcrap was a last ditch effort. <clears throat> excuse me. A last ditch effort to hang on to Zach. Because at that point, Zach said, I'm not getting back together with you because of this, this, and this. Mainly the whole you sent me the jail thing. He decides, leave the team out of this. I'm going to leave. I'm pregnant. Did you go to a doctor? Did you take pregnancy tests? No, I missed my period. Zach gets pregnancy tests. She takes a couple of them. I'm pregnant. Dismisses the idea of Aaron being the father. It, it no, it, no. What I think, and this is just me thinking out loud. I think Karen fully recognizes this is a great guy. I mean, hell, he, she even told Zach. It's like, I need to get you to let this hold of me go because I have this great guy that I can't fully devote myself to because you're still on my mind and blah, 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 blah. She doesn't want to let go of Aaron 
but I feel like her desire to get back with Zach is stronger. So she probably realizes if I tell Aaron I'm pregnant and it's Zach's baby, he's probably going to dip. And then I'm not pregnant and I, I, it's just too much. Stop wasting time. So Aaron's like, hey, I got to go to work and I'll be back later. And I'm thinking to myself, well, we finally get to see Gary in his office and working. Why don't we get to see Calvin at work? Why don't we get to see Aaron at work? But no, Karen's just still on that bull crap. Now, from there, Andy is going to her car and she's debating whether or not to drive the Rolls Royce or her car. And for people wondering, wait, her car is parked differently. I think the valet or whoever she contacted straightened the car out for her. And that's why, you know, it looks the way it does as opposed to last night. It was facing backwards last night. Well, the front of the car was facing the wall. Now, this morning, it was facing the opposite direction. But in any case, let's get down to it. She's looking between what car. She's like, Andy, don't do it. And it's funny because even though Karen called out Gary for tracking them in the car, and she was correct about that, you got to think that Karen must have some sort of like, you know, mental some Professor X level mind reading moments right there because she's like, don't do it. Wait, how'd you know? I know you don't drive it. And then she decides not to do it. But regardless, Karen says, I got to tell you girls something. I need to talk to y'all tonight. And then Andy's like, okay, let's meet up at my place. So the girls are going to come over to Andy's that night. But I don't, I haven't seen the preview for next week yet. So I don't know if like that night is going to happen for like a couple episodes. But regardless, uh, she brings up the fact that, you know, well, I went to see Aaron and, you know, Zach was there too and Gary. So don't worry about it. You ain't got to tell Zach's girl that I was there talking with him. I didn't come for him. But and Andy's like, wait, they're all the game. Yeah, you know, they just play together and whatnot. But, you know, I don't know. It's like they just they were just there playing. It's like Karen being messy. It's like she'll say something that seems scandalous, I believe is the correct word. Like there's something shady going on. But it's like, I don't know. It's like that meme where. Yeah, have you ever give somebody life advice, but then you end it with a, but I don't know. That's literally Karen. Like when it came to Preston, it's like, wait a minute, Zach, he was working at the clinic with her and as a favor to me, and he probably called Preston to introduce them. But you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. No, no, no. You sowed the seeds of dissent and then you try to end it with a, but I don't know. They were just there playing. Shut up, Karen. Keep, keep Zach's name out your mouth. That's what I'm saying. That's literally all you need to do. So again, the girls are going to meet up at Andy's later that night to, I guess you could say, hear Karen's announcement, assuming she doesn't flake and do what she did to Aaron, which is not say a damn thing at all. So the final scene is the next morning. It looks like a, <laughs> it looks like a tornado hit Danny's apartment because her and El Fuego wake up like, what the hell? My bed wasn't facing this direction last night. Um... The apartment toe up from the flow up. She said there were a bunch of noise complaints. I don't know how she would get those noise complaints if she was asleep. But regardless, um, he gets dressed, get re gets ready to head out. And uh, it's funny because like human taco. Well, hey, you see how I folded up that bed, right? <laughs> Touche. So Sabrina calls getting ready for work. And uh, they chat about the situation. She talks about the Calvin situation, the dinner. But, you know, she kind of failed to tell the whole story, you know, in regards to, you know, this guy came up to me, a customer at another bank I used to work at, and he started flirting, and Calvin just fought him, or hit him, and I'm like, well, not that it really mattered, but when you tell a story, you might want to get full context, you don't want to talk about how Bio uh, assumed he was gay based off what he was wearing, but maybe Sabrina didn't say that because she knew Danny would run with it, so from there, um... She talks about how she might get a promotion at work due to the fact that uh, she stopped a human trafficker. But, you know, he she did make a point to say, what if Calvin was trying to prove that he was macho to you? And, you know, before the story could really fully move forward, Sabrina had to go to work. Uh, Danny gets off the phone. There's a knock on the door. I thought it would be Preston because we knew the knife situation was going to happen based off the promo pictures. But it's Logan, the guy who was the human trafficker from the airport. And Danny, you know, she opened that. This is why, look, it, I, I know Tyler Perry doesn't have peepholes in the doors because if he did, a lot of situations wouldn't happen because I see you on the other side. I ain't opening that damn door. 
I mean, I don't care what kind of house I get, what kind of apartment I, well, every house I've lived in, every apartment I've lived in, they've all had peepholes. Hell, even in the college dorms, they had peepholes so you can look to see who's on the other side of the door. And uh, Danny opened the door pretty wide early in the morning. I mean, because I think she assumed it was El Fuego. So Logan tries to like, you know, ram the door in and then she runs to the kitchen to grab a knife and then the episode ends. So... That was a pretty good ending because here I was thinking it would be El Fuego or Preston, but I did not expect Logan. Good stuff. But yeah, this was a pretty average episode. I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was all right. Better than a five. So I think seven out of 10 is a fair score. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. As always, hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Hit subscribe. We are less than 1,000 people away from 200,000 subscribers on the channel. Hit the bell icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description. And if you'd like to donate, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App.